Momentum Energy, proudly energising the crows. Still got a check on that today, Rich, but we're confident he'll come up. Hasn't done a lot during the week. Did a little bit of training yesterday. We're confident that he'll play. Um, we'll find out more today. If you what we saw on Thursday night, and there appears to have been a, a long standing bruise there on his hip, has he, has he been playing with a bit of pain for a month or so? Ah, you run out the ground, you're 100%. That's how it works, Rich. Yeah, well, we'll take advice today from our medical staff. We'll discuss it. I'll talk to Taylor, then we'll make a decision. The um, challenge changes significantly. You go from probably what you could describe as a self-motivating game against Hawthorne to what you once described as sort of like an ambush game. How do you challenge the players to not fall into a hole there? Uh, we're pretty motivated, Roots, and to all our fans, I can assure you, we've um, prepared well for this game. You heard me talk about this being a, um, you know, 22 round boxing match. You know, we're 11 rounds in. We're slightly ahead on points. These next rounds are really important. Brad Crouch as well. He's had a couple of weeks um, back in the reserves. He's cherry -rolled. I didn't play last week. He's had one game back. Is he ready to come back this week? Trained strongly. Um, yesterday, we we're about to have match committee. He'll come under strong consideration. It's just the question of how much football he's played. What actually happened with that foot buggy? He was played one game and then stopped. Was it a bruise spot or a stress point? Or yeah, we had con <coughs> we had concerns, roots. So um, we went and got scans, and it's all sound. There's no hasn't refractured or done anything like that. It's just probably a little bit of discomfort, which can happen when you've been in a boot, had a screw in your foot, all those sorts of things. So it's just weighing all that up. We think he's fine um, from a structural point of view. If I was to ask you Saturday night after the game, is there one thing that you've seen today that you've really impressed you? What would, it, what would you want it to be? What's the one thing you want out of this game? Uh, look, I think the thing that really showed up in the Hawthorne game was our tackling us v them and their method. We've spoken about it during the week. We want to see uh, a better better way we go about our tackling. So that, that's the one thing I really want to see. And the other thing, obviously, that we've spoken about, we want to defend better and we want to kick better. Where do you sit on tackling? Do you sort of see it more technique or intent? Now, one, one thing in my time in footy that has really changed is the amount of... Um, time we invest into tackling now. I've already spoken about having grappling coaches, having tackling coaches, and the number of tackles that are now executed at AFL level is, you know, it's, it's nearly doubled in a short period of time. So um, the standard of tackling and how tackling's done now is probably the highest it's ever been in my time in footy. But I mean, the tackling here was sort of a, a bit of a talking point all through Sando's time. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot in that question, Harry. Uh, we're working hard to get the technique right. The thing that upset me on Thursday night was Hawthorne's ability to break our tackles and our inability to break theirs. I thought their method was better. Um, in saying that, I've been quite happy with the tackling this year. So we have spent a lot of time on it. We have seen some return on it, but it's still not at that elite standard that we saw on Thursday night. Now the the thing that Hawthorne have shown, and they showed, it in, they showed it in last year's grand final, was when they need to step it up in a really important game, they know how to bring it. And that's what we need to get better at. Phil, after what's happened this week with Bryce Gibbs, <coughs> does a coach or a player group get a little confused or a little concerned about how far you can go with tackling? Yeah, look, I understand um, the industry's issues in relation to tackling. I think the umpires are doing the best job they can and I'll leave it to the match review to decide what they determine. I'm telling our players a way to tackle and I'm encouraging them to tackle that way. So you mentioned the text would play at this 100%. How many of your players can you... Sorry, Theo, I missed that. You said text, you 
you said text wouldn't play. No, I don't think I, don't think I said that. Oh, I, said, field, I said once we run out on the field, for all our fans and the football public, every player's 100%. In reality, though, Theo, everyone's carrying something. We're round 11, we've had a break. So no one's 100%. And as Root sort of asked, some players you can play at 80%, others you can't. So you can assume, though, if he runs on the field, we assume that he can perform at that level. Do you have a number? Do you have a, do you have a gauge where you say, this is my minimum level you have to be at? I've only been here a short time, so I haven't sort of built up that relationship exactly to understand. In, in my time in footy, um, you could tell players who can carry some things and players who can't. So I'll, we'll consider it, we'll seek advice, um, and we'll make a smart decision. Is it Brisbane harder for you to scout or prepare for because it's constantly changing up there? I've scouted uh, this game really hard. Um, I'm well prepared. I'm expecting now a fierce contest. Um, I'm sure um, Justin wasn't happy with that last quarter and I expect, like we've seen on them a couple of times this year, when they get in their right mindset, they are a difficult opponent. Every time you get on a plane, every time you travel, you're vulnerable. We need to be on edge. Does that make it important that the players take the game on and not play too safe this week? We try and do that every week. Nick, but again, uh, this week, we, we, we're trying to do that at the start, and I'm sure they'll be trying to do the same to us. And how's Jake Kaliba going with that ankle? Will he be right to come back this week? Yeah, it looks as if he's OK. So again, he trained strongly uh, yesterday. We'll just consider which is the best for him to come back. We're very happy with Cole Hardigan's game last Thursday night. So considering West Coast has been significantly challenged personnel-wise in defence, and they've held up extremely well, are you looking at them and saying there's something there that Adelaide can work with? Yeah, I'll, I'll look at West Coast um, most weeks. Um, they do a couple of things that really um, that I rate, uh, particularly their ball movement out of back 50. I love the pressure that they bring. So there are two areas of their game I really like. Obviously, I still know the players really well. I'm impressed with how they kick the ball. So there's some things they're doing that I would like to think we could do here. Is it easy to translate it to Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it is, but will it happen? Might take time. I'm hopefully it's going to be this week. It's with that ball movement out of the back half field. Ricky Anderson, would he sort of give you a boost in coming back and filling that field well? Yeah, look, he played uh, State League. It's just, again, it'll be debate with the back. He, he's really nearly been a day-to-day um, -day proposition how he comes in. He trained pretty well yesterday. Um, but we'll consider him uh, in match committee today. We've had four re-signings in the past. What, Portland, let's say. Chris Seelock and the room still. Um, what's the line is, wait, is there a time where you're not going to Yeah, I think you've heard me consistently, Steve. I'm not going to give you a running commentary. Um, but for our fans, I think it's great that we've been able to sign some players and um, gives us real... Um, affirmation of what we're doing here at the club. When he's down at the bye, Phil, is one week off enough for the players to recharge? You know I'm a bit of a fans coach. Um, from a fans perspective, I'm not sure it's a great thing. For footy players and what we ask them, the guys to do, it's, it's pretty much essential. For coaches, um, I probably enjoyed the two days off, but I probably um, spent too much time preparing for Hawthorne, so probably for me I'd rather just keep going. But it is what it is. I, I, I wouldn't be advocating to, and I know some of the players are, but I think one's enough. Well, it's a very different challenge this week. Brisbane, <coughs> the Hawks on Thursday night. You did, you did some things really well on Thursday night. If you bring that level that you took to against Hawthorne, will that be enough to stand <coughs> together? Yeah, look, it, it doesn't work that way, you know. What you did last week, what you did yesterday at training, it's what you do in the moment. And what the really good teams are able to do is they get the job done game day. And without going over it, we haven't been able to do that consistently enough. So Brisbane will present a challenge to us that'll be different than what Hawthorne present to us, which will be different than what Geelong will present to us the next week. It's your ability as a group to deal with that challenge and to put pressure on them so they can't do it. Social 
No, nah, look, we have a match review panel that deals with that. We've got umpires out on the field. <clears throat> like I said, I, um, I congratulated their um, tackle pressure after the game and that's something we're trying to emulate. I'm about, about to lose my voice here, I think. <laughs> <coughs> I, I hope you didn't see my faux pas on Fox footy either before the game. Yeah, I was on the bloopers reel, apparently, I got told last night, where I, I tried to say we were going to um, mix and match, but I couldn't, get, I couldn't get it out, so... Yeah. I just couldn't say it. Did you say it, Theo? Yeah, it was humorous. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad someone's enjoying my. Uh, I'm glad someone's enjoying my media, Theo. You're not. <laughs> exactly. No, no. Look, I actually have guys who've been really nice to me. Yeah, it's been good. Can I ask, Phil, just with the, if you look across the season, you say there's one game that was the minimum level of accepted standard. Is it frustrating, say, like at Collingwood or North Melbourne? Is it frustrating you can't reach that consistently? Yeah, it is. It is. But I'll sound again a bit like a weirdo, but. Um, Great art comes out of a level of frustration. And not that I'm a, um, I don't comment on the ballet like some of us in this room, but I did go, to, when I was in Amsterdam, I did go to Van Gogh's uh, museum. And I'm not a, like I said, a, an art critic. There's a man with great frustration. And I looked at that painting, Sunflower, and for a, um, a bogan from Hamilton, like myself, I could actually see beauty in that frustration. So although our fans are frustrated, we're frustrated, we like to think there's some masterpieces still to be painted this year. All reason to keep sharp objects away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Momentum Energy, proudly energising the crows.